Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a synth DIY guy. Today we're talking about circles. Circles are everywhere in our lives. Even before the invention of the wheel, we could look up and see the full moon, see the sun reflected on the pond, even our own irises with which we see everything else. And in music we have discs, speakers, drum heads, knobs, jacks, but trigger sequencers were always square until Vladimir Pantelic reinvented the wheel with the Euclidean circles. A truly genius way to program modular drums musically, intuitively, and simply, without having to enter notes on a grid. And Euclidean Circles 2 adds some cool functionality to the original, such as the new F button and the step edit mode. I'd like to start with a quick explanation of what exactly are Euclidean rhythms. Basically, they are rhythms generated by an algorithm that aims to distribute a number of triggers as evenly as possible over a number of steps. So if, for example, you have 16 steps, having four triggers would be a completely even distribution, a four on the floor pattern, like a kick drum and house music. Eight triggers over 16 steps would give you a simple hi-hat pattern, just keeping a steady subdivision to go with that house kick. But when you try to spread three or five or seven triggers over 16 steps, that can't be done evenly since 16 divided by those numbers doesn't give you a whole number. So the Euclidean algorithm finds the closest thing to an even distribution. And no, this does not mean polyrhythms, though you can create polymeters with this method. If you call it a polyrhythm, you will annoy DivKit greatly, don't do it. So let's see it in action, shall we? Alright, so let's get down with the boogie here with the vpme.de's Euclidean Circles V2. First, let's have a look at all the voices I created here. So the first one, and I do have the six switches extension, which is a 2HP extension module that gets connected to the Euclidean Circles V2 from behind. And I'm going to turn on voice number one here. As you can see on the top circle, which is number one, you have one, two, three, and you press the button here and you get to four, five, and six. So there are six channels on the Euclidean circles. And the first one, as you can see, it's just a four on the floor kick drum, right? I'm basically using my four punch channels. Go check out the uh, Patching Panda punch video if you haven't. I'm using those four for my four percussion voices here. Your analog filter 8 is generating a sine wave, a low sine wave, and it's receiving the punch module's envelope generator into the pitch input. And it's sounding real nice. I can change the, the decay on it here if I want to, but I kind of like how I have it set. The second voice is a little bit more complicated. I have my two teaser VCOs here, which are through zero VCOs. They're cross-modulating. Both of them are receiving exponential FM from the second punch module envelope output. But then into the one volt per octave input, each of them is receiving a different signal. The first one is receiving a sequence from the mug slicer. The second one is receiving a random voltage that's being generated by my Erica synth modulator right here. So basically what that means is this is not really ever repeating. So if we listen to it for a second, It's a really cool voice that never quite repeats. And one of the other destinations of the random voltage is precisely the decay length. And I have effects on all three of my sends here on the hex mix. So the first one is a kind of a straight delay, Erica Synth's digital delay. The second one is my stereo Roland Demora on a more triplety, more dubby kind of delay. And number three, is Pico DSP Reverb. So I can apply these anytime I want to any of my voices, dub style. Let's take a look at voice three. It's a really cool snare sound I made with Journalog Generate 3. I just played around with it. I sent audio rate modulations to many of its parameters. This is really where the effect sends are gonna shine. Check it out. Reverb, triplet E delay now and the straight delay. Now I'm gonna switch so you can see what the pattern is doing here on voice four. And voice four is my last voice, 
which is just a hi-hat. I'm using the Erica Synth Modulator noise output through the product as a filter and an envelope for the filter. And I'm using my punch, my fourth channel of the punch here as a VCA with its own built-in envelope. And now what's interesting here, I'm using the built-in LFO of the product to vary the filter a little bit there. And I'm sending channel five of the Euclidean circles to the accent input on punch four here. And the sixth channel of the Euclidean circles is actually modulating that teaser voice there. So let's turn on number two. So there you go. Already right there you have a pretty cool beat between the hi-hat and the FM voice. So now let's turn on the kick and snare and have at it for a little while. Okay, so let's play around with the Euclidean functions a little bit. So in its basic operation, the Euclidean circles works like this. Each encoder actually is a button as well. So by pressing them, you cycle between three different parameters that you can edit. So blue is the length of the sequence. Orange is the fill of the sequence. So how many hits you're getting out of that circle. And purple or red controls the start point so you can offset the entire pattern by turning that one. So let's play around first with the fill. Kick drum first. Now that's cool. So that, that can even be used as sort of a, of a fill on the beat and then you can just turn it back to four and go back to your standard beat. If you want a denser fill just turn it more. I really like this one, the five. And what I found as I play around with these Euclidean rhythms is that a lot of these rhythms are very familiar to me. Like different kinds of music have used them in the past without necessarily thinking of them in terms of Euclidean rhythms. I think it's just natural for humans to think of rhythm in an Euclidean fashion, an Euclidean manner. Let's play around with this some more. That's six. Change the fill here of voice two. If you want them to sort of phase against each other and not repeat always the same loop, you can change the length of one of these. Now I changed that one to 14 instead of 16. So we're going to have a slightly different pattern each time. So as you can see, I turned it now to orange, that's blue, and that's purple or red. Purple is offsetting the pattern rhythmically. The orange is changing the fill to so how many of the steps get triggers. And the blue, how long is the sequence? So from 16 steps to one step. So let's turn on the snare again and I have the choice of turning on the snare by turning off the trigger on six switches here or the channel on my hex mix. 
now we're back to the full beat. Listen to just the, the hi hat this time. And over here I have the accents for the hi hat. Now that's just two accents. I can make it. Uh, what's that? Six? Yeah. And I can change the length so that now you're getting slightly different accent pattern on each cycle. Let's turn the kick drum on again. Like Brazilian Bayão music. Let's get that snare in there again. And voice two, the FM voice. A little bit of delay. Dub style, baby. Love that Pico DSP reverb. Okay, so let's press the button again. So right now I'm using external clock. It's control one going through compare two, and compare two is giving me a nice solid gate. And I'm actually using its uh, logic outputs for some of the syncing functions, delays and stuff. Navigator here is controlling that clock speed, it's controlling contour 1. So as you can see I can very easily... That's kind of funky right there, a little slower. Let's look at the snare pattern a little bit. That's pretty cool right there. A little more syncopated, maybe a little more African. Let's make it five. Very nice. I'm just and what's genius about this module is that you can make it's a really easy to create very interesting variations that are musical, that are rhythmically useful without having to enter note per note or change between presets, without having to think ahead so much, you can improvise with it. And pretty much any, varia any variation you find musical so that's just one one hit let's make it three again let's change the kick drum the four on the floor there Let's go to the hi-hat here and make it like a hi-hat on nearly every hit. Maybe just one less. So we have three non-hits there. And it's really easy to see your pattern because the LED goes brighter for the step that it's actually on. And you get a different color for the off and the on. You can also tell which set of triggers you're editing by the color. So the first set is that blue and yellow, right? And you also have a different color for number one, right? On over here, it's the purple. So if I change this again to, to the rhythmic offset, I can set so one's up there on 12 o'clock, right? This is a nice fill right here, and then go right back to something a little more sparse. Yeah, you get these syncopated rhythms, but they're always musical, right? You can make it more complicated, more... Change the uh, number of hits. Now that's like double time now. And it's very intuitive and improvisational the way that you can do this. 
or you can forego accents and have the three actually control when a sequence, when a note from the sequence actually gets triggered by sending it to that voices envelope generator. So that way you can use just a standard eight note sequence, but create interesting rhythmic variations on it. By instead of using the sequencers gate out directly, you use the Euclidean for that. I did that for my live set at Next Synthco about a month ago, videos up on my channel. So you can see that in action. I use the Euclidean pretty much extensively on that performance. That's a cool rhythm right there. It's each cycle changes the relationship between the voices. Let's make the snare a little bit more interesting too. This is a very performance-oriented kind of a module. Really play it. You don't have to program things ahead of time. And you can save too, you can save your patterns fairly easily. I'm gonna do the rundown of the manual in a little bit. I'll tell you about all the different things you can do with it because with long pressing each of these buttons to get into some menus you can do other things but even if you don't ever go into the menus just by using the main basic operation of the module you can get some pretty amazing results over this. Let's just jam on this for a second. Okay, so I want to quickly go over some of the things that I didn't mention. One thing that you can do is use the internal clock. So when you long press the middle encoder, you get the internal clock. Now I remove the external clock. Let's turn on these voices here. And I can manually turn up the clock, right? And now the button becomes a tap tempo. So that's really useful. If you don't have 
uh, a clock source and you want to use the Euclidean circle as its own clock source, it's as simple as that. And you may ask, well, then how do I switch between channels? Well, along pressing the top encoder switches channels. So that's good for whenever you're using a different function for the F button. There you go, I just tap the slow tempo. Let's tap the fast tempo, dialing it down. Pressing that middle encoder shortly gives you access to the Euclidean functions of the middle channel. There you go. Long press of that F button gets you out of auto clock, and now I can put my normal clock back in. Short press of the middle encoder gets me back to the Euclidean functions of that channel. And then the buttons again is back to its default of swapping between channels 1 to 3 and 4 to 6. So that's one really useful function. So let me just stop this clock for a second. If I just turn my compare to shift to zero. Moving on, presets and settings. The current rhythm is automatically stored and loaded at power up. Long pressing the bottom encoder to enter presets and settings mode. One preset always loads and saves the length, fill, and start values for all six channels and the step edit sequences. See below. So you can save your sequences. That's very cool. You're not stuck with just whatever the last thing you did. You can actually plan out a whole gig this way. Personally, I prefer to just improvise with it, but you can if you want to. So let's save this one, right? Let's say I like this. Long press bottom encoder. And now I can choose, for example, number one here. And I can long press. And now everything flashes green. Now I can go back again, so long press the bottom, and you can see that now the first position up here, 12 o'clock position, is green. And if I want to load it, I just short press it and it's been loaded. And it's, I can go back to that same beat. So that's one cool thing. You can save up to 16 presets and you can load them up very easily. The middle encoder is where you can select and turn on and off your settings. I made a little cheat sheet here, but the manual actually has a larger version of that cheat sheet right here. If you want to get into settings, long press bottom button again, and now I can turn the middle encoder to select which setting I want to choose, and then I press it to choose it. Now, here's where the cheat sheet comes handy, because you have the settings up on top here. The first one is six channel off, Channels 4 to 6 output the offbeats of channel 1 and 3. You turn on setting number 1. Channels 4 to 6 now are outputting the offbeats of channels 1 to 3. So let's hear that. Hear how that hi-hat is now the opposite of my kick pattern. Cool. And if I press it again, now I go back to my normal hi-hat pattern. Cool. Stop clock. Another cool thing is number five. I mean, it's chain one and two. So channel one is played once, followed by channel two. The combined sequence is output on channel one. So that's a way to have more than 16 steps on your sequence. You can actually have double that, 32, right? So let's try that. Turn that on, turn the clock on. Nice makes for a more more complex kick drum pattern. Let's make it a little faster. Super cool. The next setting is chain one, two, and three. So channel one is played once, followed by channel two, and then channel three, and the combined sequence is output on channel one. So then you can have 16 plus 16 plus 16. I think that's 48. So let's turn that off again and turn on the other one. So now I have a super complex. Now, step edit is really cool. I love using the, the Euclidean functions, but sometimes I may want a specific pattern on the kick drum, for example, that I want to actually define 
not in an Euclidean manner. Two after the six o'clock position. So six o'clock, one, two, and that's step edit for number one here. Play again. Now let's get out of settings. So long press the bottom. This is a really easy way to program. You just turn, turn the encoder until you find the step you want to edit. And then you press it and it turns it on or off. So if it's on, it turns it off. Right? So I'm right now I'm erasing everybody. And I can actually program by hand. Very easy. And there's also something neat you can do. You can just press and turn. While you turn, you're turning on each step. You're kind of sweeping it. So this is very cool. It makes the module more versatile, right? Even though it's obviously focused on Euclidean rhythms, you're not limited to them. You can do any kind of rhythms you want. You can do this step edit on all three. And the length of the step edit sequence is the same length as in Euclidean mode. To change it, switch to Euclidean mode and back to step edit mode. And the step edit sequence is independent of the Euclidean sequence. So when you save the pattern, you're saving both your Euclidean setting and your step setting. Now there's a bunch of functions for the F button. Those are also in the cheat sheet. So it's the bottom circle here on the cheat sheet. I hope this was enjoyable and informative. If so, please hit like, subscribe, and maybe join us on Patreon. Deluxe patrons get their names on this list. And starting with this video, I'm making sample packs of these sounds, which will be available exclusively to our Deluxe patrons. See you soon and stay noisy.